دكتور مارك فيركلر هو مؤسس جامعة القيادة المسيحية وهو مشهور بتعليمه الثوري عن كيفية الاستماع إلى صوت الله منذ عام 1972 وهو يعلم جسد المسيح في ستة قارات عن كيفية الحياة نتيجة لعلاقة حميمية مع الروح القدس هذه المحاضرات عنوانها جلسات مشورة مع الله وفيها يعلمنا مارك كيف نحصل على الاستقرار النفسي عن طريق الاستماع إلى صوت الله ستتعلم كيف أن مشورة روح الله يمكن أن تقودك من الخوف إلى الإيمان ومن الشعور بالذنب إلى الرجاء ومن الغضب إلى المحبة المحاضرة العاشرة بعنوان من الاكتئاب إلى الفرح We want to welcome you to another session of Counseled by God. حب أرحب بكم في محاضرة جديدة من أخذت مشورة من الله. Where we allow the wonderful counselor to counsel our hearts. حيث نسمح للمشير الرائع أن يشير إلى قلوبنا. And to heal our hearts. وأن يشفي قلوبنا. So in this session, we want to talk about healing depression. وفي المحاضرة دي هنتكلم عن شفاء الاكتئاب. In the early years of my Christian life, I suffered a lot of depression. في بداية حياتي الإيمانية كمسيحي عانيت كثير من الاكتئاب. But in recent years, I haven't had much depression. لكن في السنين الحديثة أنا ما كانش عندي اكتئاب. Because the Lord has taught me how to handle it. لأن الرب علمني إزاي أتغلب عليه. And I want to share just a few things with you that God has taught me. وأحب أشارك بعض الحاجات اللي ربنا علمها لي. Let's start with a practical definition of what depression is. خلونا نبتدي بتعريف عملي للاكتئاب. Depression is giving in to the pressures of life while letting go of our faith in God. الاكتئاب هو الاستسلام لضغوط الحياة والتخلي عن الإيمان بالله. Giving in to the pressure of life. الاستسلام لضغوط الحياة. And I let go of my faith in God. وإني أتخلى عن إيماني بالله. And then I'm depressed. في الحالة دي أنا مكتئب. Well, the Lord is near to those who are broken-hearted. ولكن الرب قريب للمنكسري القلوب. And He saves those who are crushed in spirit. ويخلص المنصحق الروح. So if you are depressed, God is very close to you. ولو أنت مكتئب، الله قريب جدا منك. Now there's five basic things that cause depression in my life. وخمس حاجات أساسية سببوا الاكتئاب في حياتي. And one is just the pressure of life. أول شيء هو ضغوط الحياة. And uh, some people respond well to pressure and some don't respond well. وناس بيتجاوبوا مع الضغوط دي بطريقة كويسة وناس تاني ما بيعرفوش يتعاملوا معاها. It's easy to get under the pressure and let the pressure overwhelm you. سهل قوي إنك أنت تبقى تحت ال الضغوط دي وهي تكون بتتملك عليك. And then I get depressed. وهتلاقي نفسك بيت مكتئب. But the Bible said I can consider it all joy when I encounter various trials. لكن الكتاب بيقول احسبوه كل فرح عندما تقعون في تجارب متنوعة. So instead of getting under it, I can get joyful. وبدل ما أبقى تحتيها ممكن أبقى فرحان. The Bible even says I could exalt in tribulation. ويقول كده أني أفرح بالديقات. Because the Bible says we know that tribulation brings about perseverance. لأن ال ال الديقات بتنشئ صبرا. And perseverance brings about proven character. والصبر ي ينشئ تسكية. Romans chapter five verses three to five. هنلاقي كلام ده في رومية خمسة من عدد ثلاثة لعدد خمسة. So the outer pressure can be producing an inner quality. عشان كده الضغط الخارجي بينشئ كفاءات داخلية. And if it is producing a godly quality, then that can cause me to be joyful. ولو ده بينتج فيا جودة إلهية ده بيجعلني فرح. But it can probably only produce an inner quality of righteousness if I can see what God is doing in the midst of the pressure. لكن هينشئ جوايا جودة إلهية من البر لو أنا شايف اللي ربنا بيعمله. Let's take an example of Joseph. خلينا ناخد مثل يوسف. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, to Genesis chapter 50. افتح معي كتابك المقدس على سفر التكوين أصحاح 50. Genesis 50 verses 19 and 20. تكوين 50 عدد 19 و 20. Now Joseph's got a lot of pressure in his life. يوسف كان عنده ضغوط كتيرة في حياته. It looks like it looks like evil has come against him. والأمر شكله كأن الشر كله واقف ضده. 
because his brothers were jealous. لأن أخوته كانوا بيغيروا منه. They sold him. They they dumped him into a pit in the ground. وبعوه ورموه في حفرة. They sold him as a slave. وبعوه كعبد. And uh, even the queen came against him, and he was thrown in prison. والملكة جد ضده وترمى في السجن. That's enough pressure to make anyone depressed. وده ضغط كفاية يخلي أي حد مكتئب. Because he had stood for righteousness. هو وقف عشان يصنع البر. He wouldn't give in to the queen's desire to make love with him. وما استسلمش لرغبات الملكة ونام معها. And because of that, he gets thrown in prison. ولأجل هذا هو ترمى في السجن. So I could look at that and get angry and bitter and say, "God, you didn't take care of me." وممكن أبص ده بغضب وبمرارة وأقول يا رب أنت ما عتنيتش بيا. But he doesn't do that. لكن هو ما عملش. He keeps his eyes on God. هو ثبت نظره على الله. And he's a model prisoner. وكان مثال لكل المساجين. He's put in charge of other prisoners. وكان مسؤول عن بقية المساجين. And when it's we need a dream to be interpreted, he's called out of prison to interpret a dream. لما يكون هناك حلم محتاج تفسير بيجبوه عشان يفسر. Because he kept his eyes on God, he was able to move with God and interpret dreams. لأنه كان حاطط عني على الله قدر يتحرك مع الله ويفسر الأحلام. And that ability allowed him to come out of prison and become second in command in Egypt. والإمكانية دي خليته يطلع من السجن ويبقى تاني واحد في المملكة في مصر. And because he interpreted the dreams correctly, he was able to uh, keep people from starving during a famine. ولأنه فسر حلم مزبوط إدر إن هو يحمي الشعب إن هو يموت أثناء المجاعة. And his brothers, who had sold him into slavery, had to come to receive food from the barns that he oversaw. وإخواته اللي بعوا عبد كانوا لازم يجوا عشان يأخذوا أكل عشان يقدروا يعيشوا. And they were afraid of encountering Joseph. وكانوا خايفين إنهم يتقابلوا مع يوسف. And in Genesis 50, verse 19, Joseph said, "Do not be afraid, for I am in God's place." فقال لهم يوسف عدد 19 لا تخافوا لأنه هل أنا مكان الله؟ You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result and preserve many people alive. أنتم قصتون لي شرا أما الله فقصد به خيرا. لكي يفعل كما اليوم ليحشي شعبا كثيرا. And that's what we need to see too. وده اللي احنا محتاجين نشوفه أيضا. We need to see that the Most High rules in the realm of mankind. محتاجين نشوف إن الإله القدير هو بيسود على الجنس البشري. He causes everything to work out for good. وبيسبب إن كل الأشياء تعمل مع عند الخير. And so I can trust him in that. عشان كده أنا أقدر أثق فيه. And so when I have pressure, I can go to God and say, God, what is the good thing you're trying to create in my life? And he can reveal it to me and I can cooperate with God in that. I'd like us to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 6 and following. In verse 6 God says the light the light shall shine out of darkness and he's the one who is shown in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of the God in the face of Christ. لأن الله الذي قال أن يشرق نور من ظلمة هو الذي أشرق في قلوبنا لإنارة مجد الله في وجه يسوع المسيح. So there's a light in our hearts. هناك نور في قلوبنا. And verse seven, we have this treasure in an earthen vessel, so that the surpassing greatness of the power of will be of God and not of ourselves. وفي هذا السبعة بيقول ولكن لنا هذا الكنز في أواني خزفية ليكون فضل القوة لله لا منا. For me, that's a wonderful picture of how I should look at myself. I'm an earthen vessel, and I've got a treasure inside of me. And the treasure is the Holy Spirit. And he gives me revelation, and he gives me light. 
And because of that, verse 8 says, here's what happens. وعشان كده عدد 8 بيقول الكلام الآتي. We're afflicted in every way, but we're not crushed. مكتئبين في كل شيء لكن غير متضايقين. And we're perplexed, but we're not despairing. متحيرين لكن غير يائسين. So to despair is, of course, to enter into depression. وإنك تبقى يائس إنك تبقى داخل في اكتئاب. So God says, yep, there's going to be affliction in my life. ممكن يكون في أمور محيرة في حياتي. And some days I'm going to be perplexed. وأيام كتير هكون مكتئب. I'm going to say, I can't even figure out why this affliction is here. وممكن أبقى مش عارف ليه الأمور دي بتحصل. But I'm not going to enter into despair or depression. لكن أنا عمري ما هدي أو أدخل في اكتئاب. Even though I'm persecuted, uh, I'm not forsaken. Even though I'm struck down, I'm not going to be destroyed. متهدين لكن غير متروكين مطروحين لكن غير هالكين. And here's the reason why. With هنا السبب لماذا? Verse 10. عدد عشرة. Always carrying about in my body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus can be manifest out through my body. حاملين في الجسد كل حين إماتة الرب يسوع لكي تظهر حياة يسوع أيضا في جسدنا. So our goal is that the life of the Holy Spirit would come out through us in the midst of these these the oppressing circumstances. هدفنا إنه حياة الروح القدس تظهر فينا في الأوقات الصعبة. In verse 11, عدد 11. For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be manifest through our mortal flesh. لأننا نحن الأحياء نسلم دائما للموت من أجل يسوع لكي تظهر حياة يسوع أيضا في جسدنا المائت. So death works in us, but life in you. إذا الموت يعمل فينا ولكن الحياة فيكم. So yeah, it's producing some pressure and death in me, but somehow it's going to produce life in you. رغم إن ده بيسبب ضغوط علينا لكن بيسبب حياة فيكم. Because I'm going to keep my eyes on God and say, God, what are you trying to create inside of me? وأنا بثبت نظر على الله وأقول يا رب إيه اللي أنت عايز تخلقه فيا. And he's going to say, Mark, I'm trying to create this. وهيقول يا مارك أنا عايز أخلق الأمر الفلاني. And I can say yes, Lord, and allow him to create it. And now I have a new godly character that can be life to you. There's been a pressure in my life for the last three months. I've picked up something in my lungs which has affected my voice. And I've gone to the Lord over and over in prayer asking God, what do I need to do to heal this? And the Lord has spoken numerous things to me. And as I enact those things, it produces life in you. One thing he said, he said, Mark, you've come under a curse because you've spoken curses with your mouth. I'd spoken negative things about the government because I was not happy about the government. And God said, Mark, blessing and curse should not flow out of your mouth. With it, you bless God and you curse men. And he asked me to repent. And he said, if you want to talk about the government, pray for the government. He said, I've asked you to pray for the government, not to speak negative about it. And the same about other people. Don't speak any negative about any person. I prayed and broke generational sins and curses. Because speaking with scorn was something that was also in one of my parents. And he said, Mark, he said, when you speak, you could slow down. Because people have always told me I speak too fast. 
And if I slow down, people can understand me better. ولو ما بتكلم ببطء الناس بتفهمني أفضل. So it produces death in me, but can produce life in you. ممكن بتسبب موت فيا لكن حياة فيكم. Because I can go to the light of God in my heart and say, Lord, speak to me about what's causing this problem and how to resolve it. لأني كنت بروح لله وأقول رب وريني إيه اللي مسبب المشكلة دي علشان أقدر أحلها. In verse 15, he says, "All things are for your sake." عدد 15 بيقول لأن جميع الأشياء هي من أجلكم. In verse 16, therefore, do not lose heart, for even though the outer man's decaying, the inner man's being renewed. عدد 16 بيقول ذلك لا نفشل بل وإن كان إنساننا الخارج يفنى فالداخل يتجدد يوما في يوما. So God is willing to allow outer pressure to affect my outer man if he can renew my inner man and change my inner man. والله بيسمح بالضغط الخارجي انه يجي لكي يجدد انساننا الداخلي. And in verse 17, he says this momentary light affliction produces for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. لان خفه دقتنا الوقتيه تنشئ لنا اكثر فاكثر ثقل مجد ابديا. And verse 18 وعدد 18 This will happen while we look. كل ده هيحصل ونحن ناظرين. We look not at things which are seen but things which are unseen. ونحن غير ناظرين الى الاشياء التي ترى بل الى التي لا ترى. Okay, I can be transformed while I look. أنا ممكن أتغير وأتحول وأنا بنظر. So maybe I'm down and depressed because my throat's not working so well. وممكن أكون متضايق أو مكتئب لأن زوري مش بيشتغل كويس. He said I could be transformed if I'm looking into the spirit world. لكن ممكن أتغير وأتحول وأنا ناظر للعالم الروحي. Now what is there that I could look at in the spirit world that is unseen that could transform me? إيه اللي ممكن أنظر إليه في العالم الروحي ويكون شيء غير مرئي يقدر يغير ويحول حياتي. I could look at Jesus. ممكن أنظر إلى يسوع. I could say Jesus, why is my throat not working right? ممكن أقول يسوع لي أنا زوري مش بيشتغل كويس. Why won't this pressure leave my life? لي الضغط ده مش بيترك حياتي. And he can speak to me. هو يقدر يتكلم لي. And he can talk about the changes he wants within me. هو يكلمني على التغيرات اللي هو عايز يعملها فيا. And I can say yes, Lord. وأقدر أقول له نعم يا رب. And now I've been transformed while I look into the spirit realm. ولا نفسي بتغير وبتحول وأنا ناظر للعالم الروحي. I've fixed my eyes at Jesus. On Jesus. بسبت نظري على يسوع. I've looked at him. وبنظر إليه. And I've heard back from him what he wanted to say to me. وبسمع منه إيه اللي هو عايز يقوله لي. And I got transformed. وبتحول. I didn't do it because I thought about it with my mind. مش بعمل كده وأنا بفكر ده في ذهني. I went to the spirit within my heart. لكن بروح في الروح بقلبي. The light that's within me. النور اللي بداخلي. I went to revelation knowledge. بروح للمعرفة الإعلانية. Not reason knowledge. مش المعرفة الذهنية. So I'm not asking you to try to think your way out of depression. أنا مش عايزك تفكر إنك تطلع برا الاكتئاب. I'm saying go, go to the Holy Spirit in prayer. لكن بقول لك روح للروح القدس في الصلاة. And say God, you speak to me about this pressure. قول يا رب أنت تتكلم إلي عن هذا الضغط. And and what it is that you're trying to establish within me. وإيه اللي أنت بتحاول تعمله في حياتي. What spiritual quality are you trying to build through the pressure that I'm experiencing? إيه رب الإمكانية الروحية اللي أنت عايز تبنيها فيا من خلال هذا الضغط. Let's go to chapter 3, verse 18. Second Corinthians. It says, We all with an unveiled face are beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, and we're being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. ونحن جميعا نظرين مجد الرب بوجه مكشوف كما في مرآة نتغير إلى تلك الصورة عينها من مجد إلى مجد كما من الرب الروح. So if I'm looking at Jesus, I can be transformed into Christ-likeness. وأنا بنظر إلى يسوع أنا بتغير إلى شكل يسوع. 
Again, I'm going to repeat something God said to me. He said, Mark, whatever you fix your eyes on grows within you. And whatever grows within you, you become. So life becomes really simple for me. I just want to fix my eyes on Jesus so Jesus grows within me. I want to see him standing right here, right next to me. And just look at him and say, Lord, what do you want to say to me right now? And that's the way that life's trying circumstances get healed. So that's one cause of depression, life's trying circumstances. Another contributing cause of depression could be unconfessed sin in my life. In Psalm 38:4, David says this. He said, "My iniquities, my sin, it's gone over my head." It's a heavy burden, and they weigh too much for me. So David was in sin, and it was a heavy burden. So if you and I have sin in our life and we don't confess it, it becomes a heavy burden. It produces depression. So as soon as we become aware that we've sinned, we need to repent. The Bible is clear to say, confess your sin one to another. So I'm not assuming that I'm going to come to a point where I don't sin. I assume that I'm a sinner saved by grace. And it doesn't really bother me that I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm okay with that. I didn't always used to be okay with that. I used to want to come to a point of no more sin. But Jesus said, there's no one perfect, only God. So I've given up trying to be perfect. All I try to do is fall on my knees and repent immediately when I sin. And I'm very glad to confess my sin to you. Because I'm not trying to be super good. I'm just trying to follow Jesus. When I was trying to be super good, I didn't want to confess my sin to you because I didn't want to admit that I had sin. David confessed his sin to God. He said, create in me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. So I'm going to say, let's just learn to easily confess our sin one to another. I try to confess my sin within seconds after I commit it. I hate going to sleep with known sin in my life. Because I'll wake up very mean and very miserable. So a second cause of confession of depression is unconfessed sin. And a third cause of depression is religiosity. Just going through a lot of religious form. In, in Psalm 51, verses 16 and 17, David, David says this. 
He said, Lord, you do not delight in sacrifice. He said, otherwise I'd give it to you. He said, the sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite spirit. So he's saying, God, you're not interested in the religious form. You just want a broken spirit. You want me to be humble before you. And so we need to remember that. It's not all the religious activity, it's the condition of my heart. Just stay humble, stay honest, stay true with the Lord. Alright, another cause of depression can be, can be lack of personal discipline. First Thessalonians 4.7 says this, Discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. So I, I need clear goals. I need to be decisive and follow the goals that God has given to me. And I need to be clearly focused that I'm going to live out of the, the flow of the Holy Spirit. I need, need to be disciplined about that. I come to the river of God and I honor the river of God and I honor his voice within me. I honor the visions he gives to me. And every single day I'm going to do what Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. I'm going to start my day out by communing with God. I'm going to take a walk with God in the cool of the day. And I'm going to let God talk to me. And you know, if, if you journal for five minutes in the morning and let God talk to you, it'll change your whole day. So I'm going to be disciplined about that. Otherwise, I could get depressed easily. Another cause of depression is poor care of our body. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says this. It says, Present your body as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. So this body needs to be presented to God and let God have control over it. That means giving the body proper rest, giving it proper food, and giving it proper exercise. Because this is a vessel that God lives in. This is a temple that houses God. And if I don't take care of this temple, it's going to make me depressed. It's going to be a drag and it's going to drag my spirit down. So I've changed my diet so I eat a healthy diet. The Bible talks about different diets. Daniel chose a very healthy diet. He would, not, he would not eat the rich food the king offered to him. He said, I want fruits, veggies, and water. And 10 days in that diet, his skin glowed. So I'm willing to change my diet so that this body is well taken care of. 
The Bible says bodily exercise profiteth little. بيقول كده الكتاب المقدس الرياضة الجسدية نافعة لقليل. So some people say, well, that means they don't have to exercise at all. وناس قالوا إن خلاص كده مش محتاجين رياضة خالص. Well, the Bible in that verse was comparing when it said little, it was comparing eternal things to earthly things. وفي الشاهد ده الكتاب كان بيقارن بين الأمور الأرضية والأمور الأبدية. And yes, spiritual exercise is more important than bodily exercise. وأكيد التمرينات الروحية أهم بكتير من التمرينات أو الرياضة الجسدية. But I'd like to live in this body for 70 or 80 years. I'd like it to be healthy. لكن أنا عايز أعيش في الجسد ده لمدة 70 80 سنة وأنا عايز يكون صحي. So even though 80 years is very small in comparison to eternity, it's still 80 years. ولو حتى 80 سنة دول صغيرين بالنسبة للأبدية لكن لسه 80 سنة. And if I will exercise, this body will function much better for the 80 years I live in it. ولو أنا بعمل تمرينات رياضية جسدي هيكون أفضل في 80 سنة اللي أنا هعيشهم على الأرض. So these things I think are important. وانا اعتقد ان الحاجات دي مهمه جدا. And I practice these things myself. وانا بمارس الحاجات دي بنفسي. All right, another cause of depression. وسبب تاني للاكتئاب is sickness. هو المرض. Because when my body is sick, I feel down. ولما جسدي بيكون مريض انا بحس ان انا مكتئب. 3 John chapter 2 verse 2 says this. رسالة يوحنا الثالثة أصحاح 2 وعدد 2. It says I pray that you would prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. أيها الحبيب في كل شيء أروم أن تكون ناجحا وصحيحا كما أن نفسك ناجحة. So we need health. نحن نحتاج صحة. Because when I'm sick I feel drained. لأني وأنا مريض بحس أن أنا مستنزف. So I have pursued health. عشان كده أنا بطلب الصحة. And I've pursued praying for health. وأنا بصلي لأجل صحتي. And I've asked God to teach me how to pray for healing. وأنا بطلب من الرب إنه يعلمني إزاي أصلي للشفاء. Because Jesus was very effective, everyone he prayed for got healed. لأن يسوع كان فعال جدا، كان كل شخص بيصلي لي كان بيتشفي. And I really want to press into that so that everyone I pray for gets healed also. وأنا كمان عايز أكون زي يسوع كل شخص أصلي له يتشفي. And so I'm constantly saying, God, teach me how to pray more effectively so healing power flows. وأنا دائما بصلي وأقول رب علمني إزاي أصلي بطريقة فعالة أكتر كل شخص أصلي له يكون بيتشفي. One of the things the Lord has taught me is how to use my hands for healing prayer. وحاجة من الحاجات اللي ربنا علمها لي إذا استخدم إيديا في صلاة الشفاء. Because when Jesus prayed for people, very often he would lay hands on them. لأن يسوع لما بيصلي للناس غالبا ما بيحط إيده عليهم. And that's because there's a power of God that leaves your hands and flows into a person's body. لأن قوة الله بتنساب من إيدك ومن جسدك إلى جسد المريض. When the woman who had an issue of blood touched his cloak, she felt power enter her. ولما لمست المرأة نزفة الدم هد بثوبه قوة خرجت منه. And the word in the New Testament for power means active energy. والكلمة في العهد الجديد لكلمة قوة هي طاقة متحركة. And so a divine anointing from God enters your hand and is released through your hand into a person's body. وقوة الله تيجي إلى جسدك وتتحرك من إيدك إلى جسد المريض. So when I'm praying for my body and laying hands on my body. ولما بصلي لأجل جسدي وبحط إيدي على جسدي. Or I'm praying for your body. أو بصلي لأجل جسدك. And I lay hands on your body. وبحط إيدي على جسدك. I'm going to see the power of God as light leaving my right hand and entering into your body. أحب أشوف إنه قوة الله زي نور بيتحرك من إيدي إلى جسدك. And it drives the darkness out of your body. وتطرد الظلمة التي في جسدك. And the energy comes back through my left hand. والقوة بترجع مرة تانية من إيدي الشمال. So I become a divine current, and and the current, the power, electricity of God flows out of one hand into your body and back through the other hand. وزي كده دايرة كهربائية القوة بتخرج من إيدي اليمين لجسدك وترجع تاني في إيدي الشمال وهكذا. And since a picture is worth a thousand words, I use pictures. I see it happen. ولأن ساعات الصورة بتكون بتساوي ألف كلمة. أنا بستخدم هذه الصور والرؤى. Because what we see, we get. لأن اللي إحنا بنشوفه بنحصل عليه. When God gave Abraham a picture of thousands of stars, faith erupted in his heart. لأن لما رب عطا إبراهيم صورة لآلاف النجوم، الإيمان 
نبت في قلبه I want faith for healing to erupt in my heart. أنا عايز إيمان الشفاء ينبت في قلبي. So I use vision when I pray. كده بستخدم رؤى وأنا بصلي. And I see Jesus, I see my hand as Jesus' hand. وبشوف إن إيديا هي إيدين يسوع. His hand is resting right upon my hand. بشوف إن إيديا بتستقر على إيديا. And His power is flowing through that hand. وإن قوته بتنساب من هذه الأيدي. And light is entering your body. وكده نور بيجي يدخل في جسدك. Power is entering your body. وقوة بتدخل في جسدك. The power of Almighty God. قوة الإله القدير. And I find praying that way gives me a lot better results. وشوفت إن لما بصلي بالطريقة دي بيكون في نتائج أفضل. So I've learned to pray using vision. عشان كده تعلمت إزاي أصلي مستخدما رؤى. So to get over this chest pain, I've laid my hands on my chest. لما كان هناك ألم في صدري حطيت إيديا على صدري وبتدي تصلي. And I've seen the power and light of God enter my chest and drive out the darkness. وشوفت قوة ونور الله بيجي وبتتحرك لصدري وبتطرد كل ظلمة. And every morning I've looked to see what what's going on inside my chest. وكل يوم ببص وأشوف إيه اللي بيحصل في صدري. And some mornings I've seen the fire of God just burning out bacteria and infection. وبشوف ساعات كتير إنه نار الله بتحرق كل التهابات وكل بكتيريا في صدري. Some mornings I've seen the rain of God coming and raining upon my chest. وفي بعض الصبحيات بشوف كده إنه أمطار الله بتيجي على صدري. And day by day, as I've looked for visions, I've seen different visions. وكل يوم وأنا بدور على رؤية أو بشوف رؤى مختلفة. And so whatever I've seen, I pray that into existence. وكل اللي بشوفه بصلي بصوت عالي. And I want to encourage you to do that too. وأنا أحب أشجعك إنك تعمل ده كمان. Because healing power is always present with you. لأن قوة الشفاء هي دائما موجودة معك. And vision is always available to you. والرؤى دائما متاحة لك. So use these. These are gifts from God. تخدمهم لأنها مواهب من الله. And let's become better at healing prayer. وخلينا نبقى أفضل في صلاة الشفاء. So these are six different causes of depression. وهنا ست أسباب للاكتئاب. And by addressing and dealing with all six, I have found depression has basically left me. ولما كنت بتعامل مع الست أسباب دول بلاقي الاكتئاب تركني. And so I'd like you to journal and ask God about these six causes of depression. وأنا عايزك تسأل الله للست أسباب دول للاكتئاب. And just ask Him, Lord, are any of these operating in my life and making me depressed? وقول له رب هل في حاجة من الحاجات دي بتشتغل في حياتي ومخلياني مكتئب? Life's trying circumstances. ظروف الحياة الصعبة. Is the pressure of life depressing me? هل ضغوط الحياة بتجعلني مكتئب? Is there unconfessed sin that I need to repent of? هل في خطية غير معترف بها في حياتي? Am I involved in religiosity? هل أنا بشترك في التدين? Am I lacking personal discipline? هل أنا مفتقد تدريب ونظام شخصي? Am I not taking good care of my body? هل أنا مش بعتني أعتناء كافي بجسدي? Or is there sickness there that needs to be removed by the stripes of Jesus? أو هل هناك مرض محتاج إن هو يتشال بجلدات يسوع؟ And Lord, if any of these things are here, يا رب لو في أي حاجة من الحاجات دي موجودة في حياتي, I ask you to show me that. أنا عايزك تورهين. And then speak to me about that. وأنت تكلم معي عن هذا الأمر. What do you want to say to me? إيه اللي أنت عايز تقوله لي? How do you want me to change or respond to that? إزاي عايزني أتغير أو أتجاوب مع هذا الأمر? And then after you ask the Lord that question, وبعد ما تسأل الرب السؤال ده. I want you to fix your eyes on Jesus. Isaac, تثبت نظرك على يسوع. He's sitting right there next to you. هو جالس بجانبك. And don't make it hard. وما تجعلش الأمر صعب. Just picture yourself as an eight-year child sitting there next to Jesus. شوف نفسك كطفل عمره ثمان سنوات جالس بجوار يسوع. And then take your pencil and paper and write out what he's saying back to you. وبعد كده خد ورقة وقلم وابتدي اكتب اللي هو بيقوله لك. His voice will come as spontaneous, flowing thoughts. صوته هيجي عليك أفكار متدفقة على ذهنك. So you fix your eyes on Jesus. You tune to spontaneity. ثبت عينيك على يسوع وتفتح على التلقائية. 
and you just write for five minutes whatever is flowing within you. واكتب لمدة خمس دقايق كل الأفكار اللي بتيجي عليك. And to make sure it's coming from God, you share it with your spiritual advisors. عشان تتأكد إنها جاية من الله شاركها مع المرشدين الروحيين. And when they say, "Yeah, my heart bears witness that's God," then you go with it. ولما يقولوا لك إنه هناك في شهادة فرحنا على الكلام ده إنه من الله كمل. And I pray for God to heal you of depression. وأنا بصلي لله إنه يشفيك من الاكتئاب. Father, right now we come into your presence. أيها الأبناء تي الآن في محضرك. And we speak against depression in the name of Jesus. We command any spirit of heaviness to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Lift off my body right now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of depression, I speak to you. And I command you in Jesus' name to leave me right now. You have no place within me. I'm a child of the King. I am filled with the light of Almighty God. Darkness, leave in the name of Jesus. Heaviness, leave in the name of Jesus. Demonic oppression, I break you off in the name of Jesus. Leave my body right now in Jesus' name. Those whom the Son sets free are free indeed. And Jesus has set me free. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. And amen. ثم آمين.